I am so tired every afternoon around three o'clock. How can I get my energy up? I usually drink coffee or have a soda or get some candy, but then I have a really bad slump after that. What should I do? Let's talk about that today. You have joined us for the next in our Chinese clock series, video series, and we have done everything from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and now we are on to 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., the afternoon. This is kind of a dreaded time for some people where they feel their energy just slumps, and that's pretty common. And I wanna tell you why. So this is the bladder kidney time. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. is the bladder time. Seven, uh, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. is the kidney time. It's right here on our, whoops, on our clock, on our Chinese clock. And um, so, let me go like that. So 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Bladder time, kidney time. This is the time of the water element. And we, this is, the water element is very much about our reserves of energy and how much energy we actually have. And the bladder is considered to be the great container of energy, literally holds, holds things in, as well as the kidney is considered to be the great generator of energy of the body. So these are really important for our health and if you tend to be somebody who tends to get an energy slump around 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., which again, we will not be alone in that, that's when you're gonna to wanna to reach for none other than water. Basic and true water. So if you tend to reach for the caffeine, the sugar to kind of get that little lift in your energy, go for water instead. See how much water you can drink at this time. This will really support you rather than just giving you an upper and then a, short, a sharp downer on the other end of it. So this is a very, you know, kind of just a practical time of if the energy tends to be low, take some water. Another option is take a nap. Take some time to rest. Rest your body, rest your mind, um, and then you hopefully will feel refreshed as you go into your evening around seven o'clock. So rather than trying to artificially make our energy higher, allow the energy to be a little bit lower. And of course, drink your water. I'm gonna drink some right now, actually. So we really appreciate your questions and comments. Please do comment and, and any question that gets um, po posted, we will enter your name into a, a, a drawing at the end of our Chinese medicine clock series. And uh, that will be for an initial two hour consult and acupuncture treatment. So we're gonna address a couple questions that came up a couple weeks back. And the first one came from Nikki Cornelison. She said, what should you do if you sleep through the 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. period for food? Thinking about teens who sometimes don't, sometimes don't get up until noon. And actually this might be happening a lot in your household if you have teens or young people where you know you got the quarantine going on you don't have a lot of structure to your day it's summer and getting up later missing that window that really important stomach spleen window between 7 a.m and 11 a.m and there's a few answers to that um, which is basically that's fine. It's not that you have to always eat between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. And notice how your body feels. So it's always good to even encourage our teens to notice how you feel when you get up later and you start your day with, you know, eating later in the day and to have an awareness around that. That's really going to be your best feedback and your best information is your own body as long as we're aware. Um, the other thing is make sure to experiment. Experiment with getting up a little bit earlier and seeing how you feel when you do try the suggested time to eat, which is between 7 and 11 a.m., and then see how your body feels with that. So the whole concept behind giving these time frames is to really create more awareness. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, the second question is kind of similar in nature. It's from Stephanie Greer. Hi, Stephanie. Um, I am trying, she writes, I always appreciate your insights into natural health. My question is this, 
I am trying to incorporate intermittent fasting into my eating schedule. What are your thoughts on that? I typically eat from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., so that's her window, it's her eight hour window, um, which is a, a, a concept in intermittent fasting. And this is out, this 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. is outside your suggested range. Thank you. So similar kind of answer, um, notice how your body feels with that. That's gonna be your, your greatest resource and then have presence around that, and then, and then also be willing to experiment with the earlier time. And really, it's not like it's one or the other. You can experiment with intermittent, intermittent fasting earlier. Most people think intermittent fasting means you skip breakfast. It doesn't have to be that way. It could be you eat earlier in the day, and you start your day out earlier with eating, and then you uh, taper off towards the end of the day where you might finish by five o'clock. So it all depends on your life, your lifestyle, your family's rhythms, and your home life, and how that all fits into that and your meals. So you'll have to decide what works the best. But again, these are all experimentations and awareness um, producers. So how we can become more body aware, more mind aware, and see what really resonates for us over time. So thanks so much for joining us today for these, uh, these talks on universal principles in health and nature and how those two are related for us. We can definitely be part of the whole cycle. We'll look forward to talking next week for the 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. time. Guess what that one's gonna be about? You can maybe even look it up. And um, do comment and put a question down below. Again, you'll be entered into an initial, uh, to a drawing for an initial two hour consult and acupuncture treatment. We look forward to connecting.